Creative Kids Pastors. My name is Terry Cuthbertson, and uh, today I'll be interviewing Nathan Anderson. He is a speaker, a radio host, a musician, and now an author. Sounds like you're a really busy guy, Nathan. Uh, yes, I am a busy <laughs> guy. Lots of you. Four kids, too. So, Oh, my goodness. So you're also a, a full-time dad here on, on top of it all. That is correct, yes. Well, Nathan, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well... Um, I live in Eau Claire, Wisconsin. It's uh, about an hour and a half east of Minneapolis. Um, I went, I was in Nashville for a while to pursue professional music, and while I was there, God said, no, you need to go to seminary. So I went to Bethel Seminary in Minneapolis, and while I was there, I was a youth pastor with high school and junior high kids, Wow! and that's actually where the idea for Jack was born. Yeah. And from there, I graduated from seminary and came back to Eau Claire, which is where I grew up. My brother had planted a church here, and I never planned on coming back. It just ended up they needed a guy like me, and I was looking for a place to go. And so we thought, hey, let's go to Eau Claire. So did that. I was a family pastor, small groups pastor, and uh, really focused then later on in my ministry there on children, like K through 5. And yeah. so it's been very interesting working with high school, junior high, adults, kids, the, the whole gamut. <laughs> and um, also that's when I started the radio show. It's a, it's a nightly show for kids helping them wind down the evening with adventure and music and a devotional. Um, and then I jumped into, okay, I have to finish this story that God has planted in my heart. So I, I stepped away from pastoral ministry and finished the book. And uh, as you know, just published it last month or at the end of August. That's awesome. In fact, that's the reason I'm kind of interviewing you today is, is because of the book. It's out and it is called Jack and the Scarlet Thread. Um, tell us a little bit about the book. Jack and the Scarlet Thread. Well, uh, 12-year-old Jack Hamilton gets thrown back to the beginning of time to a particular garden paradise where he meets a man and a woman who get into trouble with a snake, and they allow death and evil to invade the earth and basically cause catastrophe. Now, Jack hates death. His grandmother had just died, and he knows that someday it's going to be his turn too, and there's nothing that he can do about it. But they get a message from this guy who tells them that it's possible for the dead to come back to life and for Jack to live, and everyone else, to live forever. Now, he knows that's, that's just not possible. can happen. <laughs> until his grandfather begins aging backwards. Then he begins to think, huh, maybe this is real. Yeah. And that's how the story begins. Well, I'm telling you this. It's an incredible story. Uh, I got to read it this summer, and um, from the point I picked it up, I, I did not put it down. I, I, I found myself <laughs> kind of just captured by the storyline. Uh, personally, I'm really excited about this story. Uh, I, I really feel like this is a story that should be up on the shelf right between Harry Potter and you know Percy Jackson. Um, I have a, a young reader in my house, and she really loves this genre, you know? And, right. And, and for you to write a story like this, I, I, I just was blown away by the message inside of the story. So now can I tell people what story that Jack's transported in or am I giving too much away? Oh, no, go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. So Jack is transported into the Bible. Absolutely. And, and we start right at the beginning of the Bible, which is Genesis. And yep. we meet some just famous histor historical biblical characters uh, through this timeline. And I think that's incredible. I, I'm, I, I really think that young readers who read this, when they, when they see these characters, they're going to have questions about them. And, and I'm, I'm, I, I'm hoping that they'll even do research to find out more about some of the characters that, that you really introduce in this story. Well, I, that, that's what's happening, and that's what's so fun. I had one mom who she, she read it, and her nine-year-old actually read it. Yeah. And he, he, the first thing he did when he got done is he dove straight into the Bible to go look because he wow. wanted to find some of these characters. Yeah. Which that's what it's all about. Yeah, that's awesome. That's amazing. Well, um, let me play devil's advocate here for a minute. Some of uh, the story, I mean, obviously you're putting a, a young boy and his grandpa, his mom, I mean, not his mom, but his, uh, his sister and... His cousin, actually. His cousin? Yep, his cousin. Okay, and, and then their dog. Yes. Um, in, into the storyline... Uh, does that always, does that, I mean, how did you, how did you work with staying biblically accurate, but also adding a storyline into, you know, uh, into this historical, you know, book, this historical story that's already 
been written? Whew, wow. Well, <laughs> it, it took a, a, a lot of prayer, a lot of thinking, a lot of writing, basically to write this first book, because this first book covers Genesis 1 through 9. Uh -huh. And my goal is to make it through the rest of the Bible through this 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 kid yeah. and through the fantasy adventure format. Um, so I I basically had to lay out the entire line of of where I'm going. Yeah. Uh, so that it the both theologically things are accurate and true and point to God where it should be pointing. Yeah. And also so that the plot line for Jack it works. It works in a way that's exciting and challenging and in a way that causes real change to happen in Jack's life. Yeah, wow. So it's really, it's, it's been hard. That's, yeah. Well, okay, so with it being in the Bible and you're starting in Genesis, um, mm -hmm. are you going to write 66 books? Uh, no, no, I'm not <laughs> going to write 66 books. Um, since, if you look, most of the Old Testament is, you know, we have our Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus all the way up through Malachi. But yeah. really, you've got the books of the law and then books of history, books of wisdom, and the book of the pro books of the prophets. Yeah. And all of those books kind of mash together. And so historical figures such as Isaiah, well, he's in with Hezekiah and a few other places there in the Old Testament. So really, it's going to be like walking through First Kings, Second Kings, and Esther and Ezra and Nehemiah until we get to the New Testament, and then we jump into that era of time. That's awesome. So I don't need sixty-six books. No. Well, uh, you know, I, w I was getting ready to build a, a, a bookshelf just for Jack <laughs> if you're going to write because you know this first book is is uh, four hundred and sixty some pages. Am I? Yep. That's. I yeah. mean, <laughs> so if you're going to write sixty-six of those at that at that length. That's going to be a pretty big bookshelf I was going to have yeah, for that. Yeah, that'd be too much. I'm thinking it'll probably be around 10. I'm not sure yet, but yeah. I'm thinking that it'll be about that. Um, help some of our, our, our readers on Creative Kids Pastors and maybe those who are interested in your story. Uh, help us to understand what is the Scarlet Thread? Sure. The Scarlet Thread, it's, it's not something that I made up. The uh -huh. Scarlet Thread is actually, it's talked about, um, if you look in Genesis, Genesis chapter 3, I mean, it was paradise before the fall happened. Yeah. But when God came to Adam and Eve and to Satan, the serpent, he gave some promises there. And one was that the, the serpent would you know, bite the heel of the seed of the woman, but the seed of the woman would crush the head of the snake. And that's often called the proto-evangelion. Proto There's a big word for it. <laughs> basically means that's where the gospel begins. Yeah. That's where the scarlet thread begins too because for the rest of scripture God is fleshing out this plan for salvation. And it gets it starts with that, moves into Abraham where God says he's going to bless the whole world through Abraham and through the creation of the nation of Israel and the promises given to Moses, promises given to David about a king will sit on the throne, all the promises and, and prophecies through the prophets into the culmination of a boy born in Bethlehem. And then what happened through Christ's life, ending in Revelation and when Jesus comes back and we get to live in paradise again. Yeah. So that's the scarlet thread. Scarlet because of Christ's blood. Wow. The thread because that's how it weaves through Scripture. Yeah, yeah, that's amazing. And that's, I, that's what I love about this story is this story points to Christ first and foremost. Yes, it does. Uh, and for the readers who, who really love you know a genre that's filled with fantasy, uh, and, and some and, and and some very dark elements. Uh, your that message. I mean, because you know Jack handles a lot of dark uh, elements. I mean, you know, you're dealing with death and good and evil, um, even sin itself, uh, the nature of, of our separation from God. And, and these are some very kind of dark elements. But at the same right. point, you're pointing towards life, and I, that's what I really love about this. Uh, this story that you've written. It's an incredible story, Nathan. You've done an incredible job. Well, that's the story that God has given us. It's yeah. a story that's filled with life. And as I as I think about, like in, uh, I've had some Twitter discussions with folks who are, are atheists. They don't believe in God. And yeah. there's, there's so many misconceptions about our Father. So many things people think are true that are just totally false. Mm -hmm. And I want to write this series for two reasons. So that kids, fresh minds, fresh spirits, they will walk into their lives knowing who our Father really is. Yeah. And for their parents and anyone else who loves the genre, they'll read it and say, oh, wow, I didn't know that God was like that. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah. 
So um, I'm struggling to figure out what to call your 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 kind of book, what kind of genre to call it, because <laughs> it's definitely, I mean, it's got a fantasy feel to it, but I don't want to call this book fantasy. Uh-huh. What what are you labeling this book? <laughs> well, what should I call it? Depends. It? For fun, sometimes I label it uh, biblical fantasy historical adventure fiction. Yeah, yeah. that's. That's, That's not too long. Though. Yeah, <laughs> they don't have that at the bookstore. They don't so have I normally that just call yet. it fantasy adventure. Well, maybe maybe they'll get it there. <laughs> yes, maybe so. That'd be a really long name. <laughs> yeah, and and there'll be one book right in the middle, and then a whole shelf space <laughs> just to, to to fill the title. So. That's awesome. Well, you, you know, another thing that I really love about this story and what you're doing is, and and, and I kind of wrote about this on my blog, uh, and and I, I rant about this a lot with other Christians and other colleagues, and and I, I really at times get frustrated at the fact that we as Christians don't create culture, um, and, and 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 a lot of it comes from the movies that come out that are based for Christians. Oftentimes, are somewhat cheesy, um, aren't well promoted. They they don't end up changing uh, culture or, 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 and really reaching more people than just us who are already within, you know, or who are already Christians. Uh, and so the fact that you're, you're creating this story and, and, and culture, even almost its own, you know, sub genre of, of story, I, I'm just, I'm really impressed by that. I'm really excited that, that you're doing that. Uh, and that's why I've jumped, jumped on so much to help promote this and be a part of it is because I really want to see us start begin to, to begin creating culture as Christians. It's great that we support and, and use culture that kids are already a part of, but let's start creating culture that, that kids can be a part of, that'll be positive and that are going to, it's going to help them down the road. And I thought about that a lot as mm-hmm. I was writing because I, I did not want to write a book that smacked of uh, Christianese for yeah. a second. Yeah. I wanted it to be a book that would be a fresh look at Scripture, a fresh look at God. Not that it's you know uh, anti-biblical or any whacked out ideas, because it isn't. It's yeah. just a fresh perspective. Wow. And so, and I I struggled with how much like in in the forward of the book mm-hmm. do I put information about Scripture and all that? And I didn't put a lot. Yeah. I really didn't, because I want anybody to be able to read it and discover their Creator, kind of on their own. Yeah. And that's that's an incredible way of beginning people on this journey. You know, uh, I'm excited for those who are reading this and, and maybe don't realize they're even reading a story that's that's biblical until maybe yeah. you know the part where they hit Noah and they're like, wait, I've heard Noah. You know, and um, I'm really <laughs> excited about that part of it. You know, uh, it's a great story. Um, you know, I've 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 got my daughter now reading this story, and uh, oh, I'm see. I'm personally planning on purchasing more. Uh, for the kids here, I, I, I've even had this idea of starting like Pastor T's book club, and uh, <laughs> you know, adding this to the to the storyline so we get kids reading this story. It's it's an incredible story, Nathan. That'd you've done fun. an amazing job. Thank you, thank you. My my kids actually they go to a Christian school and they're using it for one of their classes. <laughs> nice. It's been fun just to watch kids' expressions and reactions and the questions that they have because they're thinking. It yeah. makes them think. Well, Nathan, where can people go in and purchase this book? Well, they can go to my website, NathanJAnderson.net, okay. and get it there. Or they, they could always get it on Amazon. They can get a Kindle version on Amazon. I saw um, that today. Hope to get some, uh, like a PDF ebook type version. I have it. I just got to figure out how to get it onto my website. Yeah. <laughs> so there's plenty of places you can get it online right now. That's awesome. You know, uh, I, I received my copy of the book, and, and thank you so much for sending me a copy. It was welcome. You guys, I mean, not only is it an incredible story, but I, I mean, you've really done a great job of packaging this book. It, it, it's beautiful. It came in. It's got the black cover. Uh, it's you know very glossy. Uh, mm-hmm. It just looks so sharp. And and you know, it even even the front cover and just intrigues you and, and kind of piqued my interest. It's got kind of a twilight feel to it. The the artwork. I don't know if you meant to do that, but it, it kind of no. catches your attention. Like, hey, what's up with this? I don't this? know much about about twilight. <laughs> I just told I, I had an idea in my head of what I wanted, and yeah. I, I sketched it out, or just I wrote it out to the for the artists. And this was the very first thing they came up with, and they gave it back to me, and I looked at it and said, "Yep, that's nice. it. They nice. nailed it. That's awesome." 
Well, it's it is. It's a beautiful book. You got. Uh, I, I don't know who who put that together for you, but they have. They did a great job. Um, just making a, a sharp looking book on top yeah, of that was great create story. space create space did the the artwork on wow. the the uh the cover work and they formatted the inside the mm -hmm. illustrations were actually done by an artist named caitlin clowder who's okay. actually my cousin's daughter nice very very talented illustrator wow wow well it, it does it looks amazing hey nathan how can people follow you well, they can follow me either on my website. They can sign up to receive my blog. I, okay. uh, in the school year, I blog every every day, pretty much Sunday through Thursday, my radio show. It's a half-hour show to, designed to help kids wind down for the night. So I'm always blogging about that. Okay. Um, other things I, I blog about, and I'm trying to figure out other things that I, I want to say because there's definitely plenty of other books and resources that I want to be able to help get out there Yeah. people can know about. Um, so anyway, they can follow my blog. They can follow me on Twitter at, at Nathan Anderson J. Okay. Otherwise, uh, I'm on Facebook too. All right. And I'm going to put all these links that you've mentioned uh, in this post below and also uh, on YouTube. Uh, there will be a, 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 sec a bar below that we can add all these links in so that people can right. easily follow you and, and, and just see how things are going. So, well, Nathan, thanks so much for letting me be a part of this. Um, I know I've been – I've been bugging you ever since I've got the book because I just – I really was. I, I, this is an incredible story, and you've done a great job writing this, and uh, thank you for doing it. You know, Thank you for putting it together. You're welcome. You're welcome. Nathan, will you do me one more favor? One of the things that I, you know, I really love to do on Creative Kids Pastor is share an encouraging word with uh, uh -huh. other 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 people who are in children's ministry, other, other fellow pastors, uh, would you uh, just share a, maybe an encouraging word towards somebody else who maybe has a, a story they want to put out or, or sure. wants to create yep. culture in some way? Yeah. Um, well, God has made each of us the way that we are, and we all have specific gifts, and he's planted dreams inside of our hearts too. And so if there's a dream that's brewing, stirring, growing inside, and you know you need to do something about it, do it. Get yeah. moving. Just start anywhere and start moving in the direction that you need to go. And don't try to do it alone. Get help. There mm. are so many people for me to thank in taking Jack and the Scarlet Thread from where it was to where it is now. So get moving and get some help. That's awesome. Nathan, thank you so much for spending some time with us today. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. Appreciate it.